is going on, everybody? Welcome in to the North End Podcast, episode 130. My name is Zach Graham, your host here in the North End, joined, as always, by my good buddy. He's on record as my best friend. His name is Ian Michaud, and we call him E, a.k.a. Lee James, a.k.a. Sebastian Drew E.C., a.k.a. Eastradamus, a.k.a. Pap E. O Daniel, aka the fashionista, aka Chili Willy, aka Joey Chestnut, aka Eon Stonkel, and today, aka Hap E Gilmore. E, we're coming off the first Austin FC victory of the season. Uh, we've got plenty more to get into. Last business day, best keeper in the world. The GA Cup has kicked off. You 13s and 14s are also out there in Florida. Before we get into all of that, I'll ask you, and I've got a pretty good idea. How you feeling, my friend? Oh, man, I am wonderful. What a relief to get that dub last night, especially versus those bums. I am just so happy, so ecstatic. We were calling for a happy pod, finally getting a happy (laughs) pod here. And, man, it was just an awesome night. And uh, so proud of these boys. So proud of the team right now. Uh, That was just a fantastic win. Uh, Full 90, just complete domination. Just awesome. So, can't wait to get into it. Can't wait to chat about it more. Had a happy rewatch, which honestly is because the sad rewatches are that's re- that's real pain. <laughs> like, Especially when you go one <laughs> win in 16. Oh, so, man, I am just thrilled. Like, yeah, can't get can't wait to get into it. Let's do this. Yeah. I mean, as always, we'll talk kind of the bigger picture, right? <laughs> one win does not mean everything is fixed, but uh, you need to start stringing some wings to, wins together. And to do that, you got to get one, and Austin FC did last night. So before we jump in and continue the good vibes, if you've got five seconds, pause the podcast, rate, review, and subscribe wherever you get your podcast. We would greatly appreciate that. And if you're watching on the YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. That goes a long way for us. And of course, for yourself, you can hit the notification bell to know when a live stream pops up or a new episode goes live. And of course, on this episode. Hit that thumbs up, like the video, help us battle the YouTube algorithm overlords, which you can also do by leaving a comment and joining in on the discussion. So again, any and all of that you would do for us, we love you for it. Wash yourselves clean in the confetti of the North End. E, uh, of course, get out the Wednesday episode. The next day we've got media availability. uh, And I think the most important things coming out of that, at least from Coach Wolf, were injury updates on the team, but more specifically, Jean Kolmanich and Leo Weissenden. Um, I think good news on Kolmanich here. He said uh, starting to do some individual work, uh, expects him back in two to three weeks, maybe an extra week on top of that just to get his his fitness levels back. But considering some of the whispers that you and I had heard uh, through the grapevine, it sounded like it could have been worse than that. So uh, that's good news. And then I think... The prognosis on Leo is still a little bit more ambiguous here where they initially said, you know, a month and then potentially up to eight weeks. And I don't think I've heard any sort of numbers being thrown around since that, uh, you know, mm. that like three days after that initial injury there for Leo. So I think, you know, it could be worse there. But we also got the confirmation that nobody else uh, came away from Orlando worse for the wear. And so, you know, not adding to the injury report, I think, was key and will continue to be as our numbers are thin. Yeah, I mean, that's great news on Johnny. Um, be able to get him back soon will obviously add to our depth. Yeah, once Coach threw out the uh, potential torn fascia on the Leo situation, that became yep. much more muddy and clouded. So mm-hmm. going to have to monitor that. But he is not somebody that I'm expecting back anytime soon. So just going to have to press on and. Heinz Eich looked great again last night. Uh, I thought he played really well again last night. So, you know, we're not in the situation we found ourselves in last year. So, uh, you know, heal up, Leo. We'll be ready for you when we get back. We'll hold down the fort till then. Yeah. And t- on that Wednesday episode, I had mistakenly had put the correct center back pairing into yeah. our 4-3-3 uh, lineup prediction there with with Julio and Heinz Eich. Um But it wasn't just the Austin injury report that was uh, kind of maybe not eyebrow raising, but Dallas's certainly was Mm -hmm. eyebrow raising because all of a sudden, in addition to the guys that we discussed who we expected or were already confirmed out, Jesus Ferreira tweaks his hammy in practice. He misses last night's game. And when that injury report dropped Friday afternoon, 
you know, I think we were texting like, okay, this is like, it, it's good Wuju, right? Like you obviously never wish injuries on anybody, but we've talked about how many times before have we been down and opposing teams do not give a shit and no. they go and they bury us. And so we kind of started getting into the mode uh, from the fan side where it's like, yeah, this, this has to be a win now um, because yeah. we know that the, the, you know, we are way past the fan sentiment being in the red. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, man, it was just, it was, a, it was a lucky break that Austin hasn't had a ton of, of late and they capitalized. Yep. I mean, we have not walked into many games where we've been the healthier of the two clubs in this, you know, terrible streak that we've been on. So we'll take that gift and, you know, we got that gift, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee a win. So the boys had to go out there and really just like make their mark on this game, control the game. And they did. And anytime you're out with, you're out of, of a player like uh, Ferreira, you're, you just can't make that up. Like there, there's a void that is created um, and they didn't have anything going offensively the entire yeah. night so like it showed and uh you know it's still a derby game and it's still a rivalry game so you're gonna have dude step up and the atmosphere is a little more electric so things can happen so i'm just really really proud of these dudes for their performance last night when you mentioned that lineup just on the back line it wasn't just heinz Ike, and julio getting in there together uh stuver and net johnny g back there but then hector jimenez getting the start over Guillermo Biru uh, in that midfield. We did see the change that most desired. You got Danny Pereira in there, Johan Valencia to the bench. We also got Ethan Finley to the bench in favor of Owen Wolf. And so maybe a little bit um, confusing or like there were, there was definitely that hour leading up to the match after the lineup came out where fans could kind of, you know, is it, is it Owen on the wing? Is mm -hmm. it Owen in the midfield? And we're moving, so, you know, there was definitely some, some, uh, maybe a little bit of confusion. Maybe that was just in my own head. Um, I think what we discussed after we saw the lineup and we were headed to the stadium, right, was pairing those wingers. We were thinking maybe you put Johnny and Owen on the same side um, and then Hector with Obi on whichever side they were going to be on and let Hector kind of lob those balls over the top and maybe Johnny combine a little bit more with Owen on their side. Uh, we got to see our buddy Landon Coppin was walking by us as we were getting some pregame beers walking in the Zebra Gate there. And um, he organically said the same thing to me. So when we're on the same page with LC there, it feels pretty good. And that's exactly what ended up happening, those two pairings on, on either side of the field. I really liked it, man. And Owen was fantastic. And he just unlocked our offense a little bit here. I mean, despite all the guys that they were missing offensively on the side of the ball, Dallas, um, you know, they're going to play a stout game defensively. They have some really defensive, like minded, large center backs who, who cause issues for teams. Um, so I thought that the way that Owen played last night was just absolutely incredible. And I mean, you look at that wing rotation now and it's like, you got zero minutes out of Rigoni last night. And like, yeah, if that's just, stuff. If that's just how it's going to be, like it's it's how it's going to be. If if that was a Rigoni performance last night, that would have been f by far and away his best performance this season. So I'm all for. Look, we've given the man every opportunity he, he we could. Like, and at some point in time, brother, we're just going to have to cut you out if you're not doing it. And Owen came in; he just provides more of a dynamic push, a more athletic push offensively. His runs were more well timed. You actually saw those change of uh, field balls landing where they needed to land on those <laughs> yeah. types of runs and everything. So I thought that that was a, a great call by the coaching staff to get Owen up there and just, you know, shout out to Owen, man, a teenager who has been asked to move around all different places, all different positions on this team and perform uh, particularly with even more of a microscope on him because of his last name. And he really came out last night and, he was one of the best players on the team. Like it, it, he yeah. really just was like his impact cannot be overstated right now. And um, it was just a huge, huge game from him, from, from him. And we were just out of the gate the way that we've been asking for, for so long. And I know it didn't result in a goal, like an early goal, but mm -hmm. there was so many opportunities to grab one there and they were sitting back. We knew that they're going to try to muck this game up. We knew that they were going to try to make it ugly defensive. They were physical. There was jawing all of that stuff that comes into play when you're talking about a rivalry game. So I was very satisfied with the lineup. Great performance out of Hector as well. Again, just doing his job. Like, he's not going to do anything fancy. He's getting the ball off his foot. 
He's playing it forward. He's good. He's good in control in regard of we're going backwards as well. Very decisive. So uh, uh, shout out to him as well, man. I, I could go down the whole lineup and shout pretty much every single one of these <laughs> dudes out for last night. Um, you know, it was just a, it was a great lineup, great executed game plan. And we, we stomped their ass. I mean, I know we beat them only two one, but we were by far and away the better team for a full 90. Yeah, I think each one of those guys will get their flowers from us at some point during this breakdown. So we can just we can go ahead and, and get into it here. Uh once again, just before we do, bench not filled out. Um a little bit more understanding of that. Um, because we just had a, an FC toe game on Thursday night where any of the guys you would be considering to to fill out that first team bench went 90 or very close to it. Um but still, it's just again, it really highlights how thin we are right now in this this rebuild period. Like, it's not just a rebuild where you're like trying to reshuffle the roster, but like you just literally don't have enough guys to yeah. fill out that bench. Um, so the bench was Cleveland backing up Stu, and then you had Hedges, Valencia, Finley, Biru, Zardis, and Rigoni. Um, congrats to Jesse Zardis, 300 MLS appearances, and then I believe 100 appearances in Austin now for both Julio Cascante and Danny Pereira, if I'm not mistaken. So congrats to those guys. And this game, I mean, especially this first half, um, unsurprisingly, right, is, is really chippy. So on Austin's first possession here in the first minute, they win a free kick about 20 yards outside of the Dallas area to the left, just noted live. Um, and then you see it throughout the rest of the match. You had Owen on corners, Owen and Danny line up over this one. And then you've got Galley and Hector kind of flanking them to the right as that back line. So you get all of our larger players in the lineup, um, plus Obreon, up there on the line, which is 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 good. I mm -hmm. think like it's it's something I like to see. I thought both Danny and Owen did well, uh, especially Owen since he was on on all of the sets and except one, I think, that was the Jerusi free kick attempt. And on the corners, which we didn't have a ton of, but I thought he did well. We didn't see any corners into the first fucking defender and not getting over anybody, which is an automatic improvement and not a hard one to make, but it was nice to see. Yeah, I thought this first ball that he plays was very dangerous. Uh, I liked the set pieces early. They looked crisp. They looked they looked refined. And this was a great ball into a dangerous area. And then Julio lets this one ride out, right? We get the long throw. Yeah, I think you're correct there. Um but my next note was kind of in the in like the fourth fifth minute here where we're again controlling possession right off the rip here. But this is really where I first saw and we noticed like building out of the back from that goal kick or Brad or whatever. Right, that first phase of the buildup, you see Danny as the one in Valencia's spot. Like we kind of thought maybe it'll be Alex sliding back there and Danny still playing more of that box to box role. And I think I was I was glad. I think it paid off with flying colors to have Danny being that guy back there. And I know that um, maybe, even though we haven't seen it a ton, especially with him, you know, kind of trying to fill in as that pseudo 10 role when Sebo was out. Um, I know that his skill set can provide for somebody who goes more further up the pitch. Like we've seen it in short flashes. Um, but the way this team is constructed right now, mm -hmm. especially when you're not holding on to a lead, Danny's just the one for that, man. He he unlocks the offense. I think Owen, as you said earlier, I'm not disagreeing with what you said about Owen, but Owen's quality in the final third to help the offense along and keep it humming, like that starts with Danny being that connector. And he was great. Abs he was he was absolutely fantastic. And you're right. And he's got a hard job. And I know that coach touches on it where it's like his – Danny's touches in that area that he's usually getting the ball are dangerous ones because if yep. you turn that ball over, it's suddenly we're going the other way. So he was absolutely fantastic. We called for it on Wednesday that he needed to have a big game and really step up. And you're hundred percent correct there. He is the connector into the third. And then when you have a healthy 10 up there that we can go get the ball to, mm -hmm. everything just looks so much sexier, just so yeah. much more clean. I thought Alex, despite having a, a very confusing play later on in this game <laughs> hey, we'll talk about it was really good i thought that yeah, he had some yeah. really nice one touches some play ons and stuff like that that we were we were taking taking advantage of so uh going forward this is what i want to see and i i think that your assessment there is 100 spot on like yes would it be great to have danny further up the pitch being able to to be in a more uh you know attacking uh play style yes yeah. 
can we afford that right now? Probably not. And yeah. um, if he's got to do his job like that, he did it to a T last night. He was awesome. Pedro Musa is a large man, much larger than Danny. <laughs> and he was all over his butt. And um, that's just – it was just a great response from everybody on this team. 16th minute here. Driussi turns in the midfield, finds a lot of space above both of those Dallas lines, which, again, as expected when that injury report came out, sitting yep. way back. And one um, Drusi slides a pass through to a cutting Diego Rubio. His shot gets blocked away by Poss, but falls to the feet of Obreon. His shot gets blocked by another Dallas defender, and Seba picks up that rebound. He puts it into the south end. Uh, didn't really connect on that well at all, obviously. But flag went up anyways on Rubio's run. But again, the, the pressure was there. You're seeing those line-breaking passes that aren't necessarily coming down the wings. And being able to maneuver through that low block that they're bunkering in, from the start, like that is something we don't see a lot. And to your point, when you have 10 up there and not just having them on the field, because we've had it for portions of the last two matches, he looked like he had more of his sauce back, right? That he's now feeling comfortable out there with the hamstring um, and the gravity that he demands from a defense. It makes it easier on all of his teammates, just his presence alone. Absolutely. I mean, after the rewatch, I texted you and just was really, really excited about and thrilled about the one two play that he was having with Obi, putting him behind the line, playing those like balls into space where it's actually like anticipatory passes as opposed to making Obi stagnant and just putting the ball on his foot in a, mm -hmm. in a non advantageous position. So everything looks so much better than him and with him. And now that he's kind of getting his groove back, getting his confidence back getting his fitness up like it's just it's exciting man because we're completely no everybody knows this but we're just a com like literally night and day when he yeah. is at his best and he hasn't even reached that yet in my opinion because he's still got some steps to take where we hasn't scored yep where we'll show like what he'll show what he can actually do and bring to the table even more so than what he already does but we are a completely different engine when he is healthy and he is in a right space 19th minute here. Austin keeping that pressure on. Uh, Jimenez hits ring. Ring one touches Owen Wolf through, and Owen um, goes down in the box. Nothing in that. Uh, went down a little bit easy there, but the play continues because the ball keeps rolling. Rubio chases onto that loose ball. He gets a touch to it. Pass takes him out because uh, Pass was diving for that ball too. Um, so it looks like Rubio probably got there first, and I think that is a pin if Rubio's not offside first. So unfortunately the flag was up, but then there's extracurriculars after that where Paz takes exception because I think, and he probably has a good case for saying Rubio touched the ball and then like threw his feet into me. Um, so he gets mad at Rubio, pushes him down. He flops, acts like he's been shot. And then the teams kind of come together uh, and Paz ends up getting a yellow card for his troubles. Um, but again, this is just like, I, I'll let you wax poetic on your boy because we both love Diego Rubio, but you called it from the start, from the preseason, right? That this is like, this is your guy now. And I think mm -hmm. I said it in one of our group chats last night. It's like, we've got Felipe who's like actually good. You could start him and play him 90 minutes. Yeah. Oh man. And just to see how quickly he was able to get into these Dallas players heads. Like he's got, uh, pass all screwed up. He gets Ibiaga and, you know, later on and like, Man, you know, the uh, obviously we're we're big fans of Giassi as well, and they are just the polar opposites in regard to their mentality, their personality, how they approach this game. Like, Diego is not going to be afraid to sell some foul calls. I saw Pass mo motioning towards, like, he got hit in the face there. I don't think he did, but I understand mm -hmm. why he's a little upset. And, man, Rubio, and you saw last night, and you saw it actually resulted in a goal where we were talking about when we get a healthy 10 – with Rubio, his spatial awareness, being able to get behind lines and everything. I absolutely love this dude. He might be my new favorite player on the team. Like I, I just, <laughs> it's, he's so much fun to watch and he just does not stop working. Like, yes, he can have a little flop, a little acting into his game, but this man is tireless, endless motor and we need it. And he's brought it every single game besides yeah. maybe the Orlando one, which, you know, we can't really hold too much against him, but he was still right. pushing hard for everything. So, absolutely love this dude uh man i've been on his instagram just being like dude 
so happy you're here. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> it's so awesome. Just letting them know. Hey, and I mean, I was sitting there in the stands last night telling you that I was looking over the sheets earlier this week. And obviously we know about there's a lot of contract uh, expiration dates and options that we can either pick up or decline. I would pick it. I'm picking no. up his option today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like 350 no. K for that guy. Dude, no brainer to bring him back. Like obviously we'll, that's a, a way <laughs> so off. far down the road, but it's just but, like, again, yeah, because we want you around for as long as we can get you, man. And yeah. fuck. Uh, he's just so fun, man. It was just awesome. 23rd minute. I just noted, I thought this was a great piece of work by Seba in the moment. And then seeing it from the broadcast angle on the rewatch too, just like, the effort from Seba here to win the ball back from multiple Dallas defenders. Like, mm-hmm. I think in the moment, this is where I was like, oh, he's back. Because, I don't know, it was just, I just thought it was a very tenacious play. Like, he battled, like, two, maybe three different Dallas guys for this loose ball and ends up coming away with it. And, again, it was just another positive sign. The next minute you do get Owen booked, kicking Legette's leg. Um, I think we were kind of questioning that live as well after the replay. Deserved y'all. Yeah, after the replay, too, that game had started to get a little more physical than the refs wanted to deal with. So I think that he was quick with that yellow just to try to get a little more control over it. But, yes, uh, deserved yellow there, which had us worried because, you know, we saw what we were looking right like this first 25 minutes here, and he was a huge part of that. Yeah, very aggressive and don't want him to, you know, lose any of that bite. Luckily, he didn't. Uh, 30th minute here, Gallagher hits Wolf down the right. Galley overlaps. Alex checks back towards Owen from the middle. Owen taps it to Alex. He gives it right back. Then a quick one-two between Owen and Julio. And Owen gets it back into ring, who had space for a run. Owen, beautiful, lofted through ball here. Right to the foot of ring. Ring crosses towards the back post. Obreon's there. Can't quite get a touch. Some decent defense, maybe a little behind him as well. And Heinzeich ends up scooping up the loose ball outside, you know, I don't know, 10, 15 yards outside the area. He takes a crack from distance. It's not the worst shot we've seen in an Austin uniform from that area, but um, it also looks like uh, on the replay, it looks like if Alex just hits it towards the spot, there's Seba's first goal because he was open right around that area. But again, still dangerous. Just I think the the play in the final third, and obviously we'll, we'll uh, talk about some of the you know overall takeaways later, but the play in the final third was the best we have seen it this year. The finishing is still leaving something to be desired. I think, you know, coach said, the players said, and I think a lot of fans would agree, the team could have had three or four goals last night. Absolutely could have had three or four goals last night. Get unlucky a couple times. I was satisfied with this ball from Alex. You know, like hindsight 2020 here, if he made a perfect play and found Seba right there at the spot, then that's a tap in. Uh, But Rubio's making a great run here. He goes into the back of the net because he's trying to run through that ball because, (laughs) again, he is the man. Uh, Obi, another great run there too, as well. Just, uh, you know, the timing was a little off. And if you hit those every single time, you're scoring seven goals a game. So like, you know, it, it is what it is, but that, that I just don't want to, I don't want that pass the initial pass from Owen to be lost. And yeah. the fact that we didn't actually score because wow, what a ball. And like, there was yeah. a play before that where Alex is trying to make that run and Owen doesn't have it, but he registered it and processed it. And then he hits him with a cheeky one there and, it was it was very nice build up. In the next minute, Austin building out of the back. Danny lets a pretty simple pass get away from him. Just a momentary lapse of judgment. I think Dallas off and running here. Musa hits Paul Ariola through down the right. Stuver makes a solid save. Then Julio cleans it up, clears it out. Um, and here then Driussi gets taken out on the break. Pretty much an identical foul from what Owen got carded with. So I'm not sure why the official didn't go to his pocket there. Um, Because that was, a, I mean, again, it was a very similar foul. Yeah. I mean, it was even probably worse given the positioning of the ball and where Dallas was in a compromised state defensively yeah, with our best transition. player on the ball at half field. So I don't know why there wasn't a yellow drawn there. 36th minute, Austin building out of the back once again. They do well to work it down the left. Hector lifts it over the top. To Obi and Obreon finds a wide open Alex Ring. And let's let's look at this because there's gonna be more praise for Alex again, yep. even after the rewatch. I think like he did a lot better than I thought coming away from it live. Um, yeah, so Obi finds Alex Ring, and Alex Ring called for this ball. 
<laughs> he did not shoot that. Uh, yeah. And like, if you're watching on the YouTube, we've got the freeze frame up. And look, freeze frames can be a little bit deceiving. I promise you, this one is not. Yeah. This is the most timid I've ever seen. Number eight. I don't get why he didn't rock it, just blast it at the net right there. He yeah. ends up cutting it back to his left, gets it blocked. And then I think on the rebound, he actually gets it past Martin Poss on the mm -hmm. second attempt. But then it's cleared off the line by I, either Ibiaga or Tafari. Um, yep, I think man, it was. This Ibiaga. has to be a shot here with his right. I, absolutely. I mean, the near you see that near post and the amount of space between the post yeah. and post there. That's a fucking. That's a gimme. So yeah. I don't know what was going through his head here. And like, you take these extra. He doesn't take just one extra dribble. He takes like two or three extra dribbles, which gives those guys all that time to get back. And obviously, Ibiaga runs behind Paz to block what would have been a goal. But, yes, this was the most confusing and most baffling play of the night. Um, but I'm, I, Alex responded after this, and I thought he yeah. you know, I thought he put in a, a really great uh, uh, shift there. Yeah, I agree. 39th minute here. Danny gets pulled down about eight yards outside the box. Again, not sure how this isn't a yellow. I'm stopping the momentum in the final third. Seba lines up over this one. Puts it just wide left. Um, you know, it was I think it was a solid crack there from five, six yards outside the box. Um, eventually, he's going to net one of those, right? Mm -hmm. Eventually. Mm -hmm. And we thought he, he was. We were having a conversation there with, with Fudge and Damon. Mm -hmm. um, and we were still curious as to why he hasn't been able to put one of these in the back of the net. Because obviously, you understand the skill. You understand the talent that the man has. And uh, on the rewatch, you see all in there. He thinks it's in. He's celebrating yep. already, and and we thought it was good for a hot second there. Uh, but a really great strike, uh, good distance, and like he had the full net to kind of work with, given where the positioning of that ball was. So um, it, it, it'll happen. It'll come. We'll get one of these. And obviously, now that you know we're without uh, Fagundes for all this time, he was our set piece guy. I think it's going to be much more of a transition where you have these dangerous kicks lined up, and Ten's going to be taking all of them. 41st minute here. Austin, quick throw on the break. Assist from uh, Coach Wolf there to Diego mm -hmm. Rubio, who finds Owen. Owen makes a great turn and then a quick pass to ring at the top of the box. This was a great pass. I wasn't sure when he let it go that it was going to have enough weight to it to actually get all the way there to Alex, but it, it does. Alex slides it onto Obreon. Then ring overlaps him. Owen is cutting towards the middle. And Obi, with some patience, finds Seba darting in behind Owen right through the middle of the box and Seba whiffs on the chance. But then you look at the replay looks like it took a little bit of a deflection there. And after watching that replay, I'm not actually positive that Obi wasn't shooting that. Um, but again, it was another threatening buildup where you felt like we've got to come away with the goal here and you get to halftime nil, nil. Um, and I think at that point, at least I was saying to, to you and anybody who was listening to me in 123, like we are ripe for a counterattack disappointing goal against here. Yep, absolutely. And I think that, you know, you looked at how much we dominated this, this game and to not have a goal from all of these chances. I thought Obi was fantastic at, at, in his position. This, I don't, I'm going to, I'm going to say it was a pass. We'll give him the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> okay. Um, but you know, just to, it, and you know, with the, with the record we've been sitting at with the historically, awful shots on goal, expected goals, everything like that, then, the, you know, the pressure starts to turn up a little bit. So despite them scoring early in this second half here, mm -hmm. I thought that the boys weathered it really well. Like, cause the expectation, obviously, you know, that, you know, the, the, the emotions are running high in, in the stadium there. So I, I was very happy with the response and then even happier after we do give up this goal and then respond immediately um, so yes, it would have been nice to be up one nil there. We deserved to be up one nil, but this is a cruel game. And, um, at, in the end, the, uh, the cream rise to the top. Yeah. 51st minute. It was Ibiaga who plays a long ball that Musa flicks on right between Julio and Heinzeich. Both of those guys challenged him for that in the air. Mm -hmm. Um, which I think number one, a clear mistake, right? M yeah. Not communicating well enough. there, not clear. And uh, something that they'll clean up, just like Alex will clean up that, that freeze frame we showed in film. He'll want that back. These guys will want this back as well. But I also would give a little bit of credit to 
uh, Musa, who is massive, and mm -hmm. it was a very nice flick on there. Um, and Ansa runs onto it. Um, he's able to slot it past Stuver. And I think, like, this is probably the biggest mistake that our CB core has had all year, right? I, I would say so, yes. I mean, that's a simple communication thing. Obviously, good offense with the flick on. I thought the finish by Ansa was really, really good as well. But mm -hmm. I think he also got fortunate that Johnny doesn't actually hit this ball. Like, yeah. it looks like he overruns it by like a half step. And like, yeah. then he just squeezes it, squeezes, squeezes it in uh, between Stuver and, and Johnny's outstretched foot. Um, but yeah, uh, solid offensive play. And those dudes, you know, th this is this is their what second. No, he didn't play. It was that's Julio their, that's their so first their start together. First start together. So you know, yeah, that's something we got to clean up. Get get that together. And yes, that was the only real defensive, like full on laps that we had the entire night. And basically, that was their entire offensive plan was to try to get some ball forward to Musa, and then hopefully you get an advantageous counter attack, which you were very worried about, and rightfully so because we were right for it because we were pushing so far up and we wanted to get that goal and we deserved to have a goal. So a good finish. Um, but the response is what we care about the most here. And it was a hell of a response by Verde and black. Yeah. 53rd minute here. Uh, Austin actually asking for a handball here in the box. And I think on the replay, it looks like there was a case to be made, but the ball's put back in play by Austin. I assume I don't remember off the top of my head. I assume the ref was like, ah, we're not checking anything right now. Let's play. Um, and so this was a this was in very much long throw territory. John takes it out, but he plays a short throw to Alex, who just taps it right back to John. And he's got all kinds of time mm -hmm. to fire in just this free cross. Um, and he finds Julio's head. He knocks it in. A little bit of luck involved here, I think. But big body going up to get it. And again, you catch that break and level again. The emotion from the guys when that ball went in was awesome to see um and again like you mentioned earlier not something we have seen this team do in mm -hmm. over a year they don't they don't respond to yep. getting scored on um what like at all yeah but i will i will go back to what we've seen so far this season starting with the preseason exhibitions we saw this team and again you can't compare that to real games because they're they're not comparable mm -hmm. but Multiple comeback efforts in the preseason for wins. Yep. And then this season, look at home, right? St. Louis goes up first, I believe. Yep. End up coming back, taking the lead. Uh, Philly goes up first. We draw level. We go ahead. Of course, give up the equalizing goal. But again, like this team already, even before yesterday, had more fight in it than the 2023 version of this roster. And it hadn't come through with a win yet. But there were signs that I think I certainly maybe didn't ignore, but kind of glossed over a little bit because I think going through these first six games, the mentality, the fight, this is not the soft team that Will Bruin was talking about in the first match. They didn't do anything in that first match to justify not getting that title from Will, mm -hmm. but they have bounced back in a big way, even though it has only resulted in, in one actual victory. Absolutely. And like in this situation here, do we get a little lucky with this Julio goal? Abs we do. Yes. But you create your own luck. And we have been creating our own luck in these situations, particularly in this game where it was like we've been knocking on the door. We're right at your doorstep. We're coming. We're trying mm -hmm. to get one behind you. And like it comes and we'll take it. And to your point there, a lot of people have been talking about fight and mentality and things like that. And that stuff always is exacerbated when uh, you know, you're losing because it's easy to point and just be like, well, there's no effort. But if you look at the collective whole of these six games right now, taking out the Minnesota first half and just a limited roster, poor game plan versus Orlando, we have shown a lot of fight, a lot of resolve. And again, I, I point to Diego Rubio, who has brought it all the time. And like that stuff, it is contagious. It is infectious. Like you are going to get other dudes playing harder when you have somebody who's going full fucking tilt every single time and not to just, you know, focus that on Diego, because I thought everybody as a collective, as a whole was, a, had a great response. Alex has this mishap in the first half, but he responds. So I, I was thrilled with this. This is a nice little smart play because we had stretched them out pretty consistently mm -hmm. in the first half wide. 
which was causing them some more and more fatigue because once again they were the team that was just weathering the storm, taking you know taking hit after hit and trying not to break. So you see them get a little more compact here. And when we have guys like Julio, Heinz, like Hedges in that box, we have some size in there now, and that's a huge difference from last year when Alex was playing fucking center back and he's you know <laughs> five eight or five nine whatever he is. So I thought this was a smart heads up play. Johnny whips this ball in, and that is how you respond. We took all the momentum back. They knew that the goal that they had was very fortunate. And like it again, we, we respond again with just more really solid play. So all around, just fucking thrilled, man. 58th minute here, Diego Rubio gets his uh, first yellow card of the match. And just his third? I thought that was his fourth. Uh, but according to the match 12th. logs. Yeah, <laughs> according <laughs> to the match logs, just his third uh, for taking out Dante Sealy there to stop the Dallas break. 59th minute. Seba goes down after a little duel with Liam Frazier, grabbing his knee. AT's come out. Not really sure what was up with that. He gets checked out, kind of flexing that knee. Ends up going on and looking fine. Mm -hmm. my best guess is that they just kind of went knee to knee there and like he needed a breather to kind of shake that off yeah because he didn't look any worse for the wear the rest of the match could have been like a dead leg you know yeah. you just get hit you gotta stop spot. scaring us like that man oh, like we yeah. could flash a thumbs up or something <laughs> like i yeah. can't breathe yeah <laughs> <laughs> i think i said that uh god my heart can't take this yeah <laughs> 64th minute, Driussi back on, steals a ball near midfield. He taps it through to Rubio, who's in two-on-one with Obreon on Martin Pass. He knocks it over to Obreon. He slots it home. Unfortunately, flag goes up, I believe, for Rubio initially being offside. I'm not sure if it was initially Rubio or Obi on that second touch. Um, mm. Camera angle was, was real tough there. But Obreon, contrary to some players we've seen either move from another team to our team, or our team to another team and like not celebrating Obreon, that was a fuck you celebration. And yeah. man, I hated that that got called back, not just because we want more goals for our favorite team, but for him, because yep. you saw how much that meant to him and for it to get called back kind of that, that really stunk. Absolutely. Uh, definitely wanted it for him. He deserved one last night. He had plenty of opportunities and he was very active, very, very relentless trying to put the ball in the back of the net here would have been awesome if he could have got that versus his old club there, but you know, that's the mentality you got to have versus every team, man. Uh, teams passed on you in the re-entry draft too. So mm -hmm. fuck them. <laughs> yep. 70th minute, Hector Jimenez still in the match, drops it back to yeah. Seba who's building up down the left. Uh, Seba takes a quick peek into the box. Looks like he may have made eye contact here with Diego Rubio because Drusi pops it up right over the back line, but not into the range where Martin Poss can come out and get it. Just another precise ball here from Driussi, uh right onto Rubio's dome. He heads it down into the ground, into the net for the lead, and the uh, place goes crazy. Uh, I mean, that's about as perfect as you will see a goal all season. The ball yeah. is absolutely perfect, like you said, just far enough behind the defense, but not too close to the keeper where uh, Diego is going to either get punched in the head or it's <laughs> yeah. going to be a catch by pass. Diego, the awareness to make that run, stay on sides, drop that ball into the ground, which we have learned is the best way to, to, to do that now. <laughs> yeah. um, and man, uh, you know, the connection that we've been waiting for between those two was on display last night. And this was the culmination of all of it, because on the rewatch, you see who's in front of Diego there. And that's Ta Tafari and yep. like one of the best defenders in the league, a super athletic guy who's great in the air. And Seba just plays him just yep. just bet better than you dude and like yeah. this ball is absolutely spectacular and we're rocking now yep got the best of them got the lead with 20 minutes to go uh farrington comes in for ansa here the goal scorer and then 78th minute Guillermo biru comes in for hector jimenez um ethan finley looks like he was going to come on and then got called back um, yeah. so i'm not sure what was up with that but uh, i got no complaints yeah, that was odd. I, yeah. I absolutely have no complaints. That, But that was very odd. And I thought we were going to get Johan because obviously this is what his his specialty is. But we kept the heat on him, man. And um, I know that Biru is not going to get too much talk here in this, uh, you know, the rest of this uh, game breakdown and everything. Yeah. But this ball that he has later on to G, to G is just. Yeah. <laughs> yep. You see the talent, 80th minute mm -hmm. here. Obreon gets in on that nice flick on from Ring, who had received the pass initially from Guillermo Biru. 
Obi shot gets deflected off the line by Junko for a corner here. But again, not just uh, Biru setting Alex up with that. The one touch passing by Alex to create multiple chances last night. I actually, I think they flashed a thing up on the screen near the end of the match where it said he led all players in chances created in last night's game. It was like four or five. I mean, he, on the rewatch, you see him. And that was so, that was a takeaway that I did not have after watching the game live at Q2 was like, mm-hmm. I, I thought Alex played fine. I didn't think he was great. I still don't think he was great, but he was very good. Um, very good. Especially again, just like playing that role. Like if he has to settle into this role where he's maybe not as impactful on the defensive end, not that just destroyer, right? That asshole who is going to come in and win the ball back off you and let you know about it while he does it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it, yeah, it was a, it was a good it was a good game by Alex, um, despite some of the glaring, just like what? Yeah. I mean, that one's always going to stick out to people with him in that wide open net yeah, there to yeah. take that shot. But the things that aren't going to stick out are those really fantastic one touch plays in very tight, intricate yeah. situations where he's li- he wasn't only just getting these one touch passes off. He was leading guys with them. He mm-hmm. was putting them into the space that they needed to go and be into. So I thought that he was great. And like we talked about with Danny, like, is this the best place to have? Like, is this where we're maximizing your talent? I'm not sure but it is what is required of you right now, given the current roster construction and how thin we are. And I thought that this was, I, I, I would say is his most complete game of the season. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, He's got, he's got three assists on the year, which I was surprised to see earlier when we were checking stats and everything. Um, But I thought this was his most complete game. And when we gave Danny his praise and his flowers for what he was able to do in regard to being the great connector for us, Mm -hmm. Alex did not drop the ball when it became his turn to be the playmaker connector for us. So uh, shout out to cap for sure. 81st minute. You get a triple sub here from Dallas, Sabalang, Kamongo and Delgado in for Tumasi, Sealy, and Frazier. And then you get the response from Austin's coaching staff hedges in for Obreon going to that back five as Dallas had adjusted similar to what we saw against St. Louis. Right. And I think coach says it uh, in the press conference is like, it's the right decision. Yeah, reacting no, to what the other team is doing and it doesn't always work because the players then have to go out and execute it um but it ends up working here 88th minute you get julio with a yellow card going through the back of logan farrington and that is julio's fourth yellow in five matches played uh yeah so julio uh probably going to miss a match here at some point you have to go what five matches right for good mm-hmm. behavior bonus so Unless Julio can go five matches in a row without a yellow card, again, just got four cards in five games, uh, you will miss him at some point. But hopefully he can get that bonus and, and keep it clean over the next month. Hopefully. I mean, I feel like some of these yellow cards should be like half yellow cards given who was handing them out in the beginning of the season. Just some <laughs> buffoons. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, that is shocking because obviously we were worried about Rubio potentially getting suspended and – that's just going to happen. Like that's yeah. un- and you called it the first game. <laughs> it was yeah. Like, damn, this dude, he's really a dick, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> um, and fucking now Wolf's out or, you know, coach Wolf suspended yeah. because <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So the- Wolf out next game. Yeah. We'll see what we we'll see what our is all about, man. Um, yeah. And like, you know, like if things were better, I think people would really like that. You know, like you see, <laughs> yeah. you see other managers who, you know, standing up for their guys on these ref yeah. butts and everything. And like, again, having to deal with these trash refs that we had earlier in this season led to a lot of frustration for a lot of coaches. And like yeah. Josh is definitely has been frustrated this season. And like, <laughs> I, I'm all for it, though. Like, I, yeah. I, I respect the fact that he's sticking up for our boys out there. He fucking nailed it, bud. <laughs> I'm with you though. I think that's something that probably won't get talked about anywhere else. Is I th- that that's what I took away from him and the bench, right? Because I think it's I think he gets like if say Davey gets a card, I think that goes to yeah. Josh, right? In that in that accumulation. So thank um, God you're not on the bench. Yeah, goddamn. This man would be coaching every every other week. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> First minute of stoppage time, you get Zardis in for Rubio, who on his way out screams at the fourth official, who is showing <laughs> eight additional minutes for some reason. Um, yeah, what? Yeah. I Can we know. talk I, about that? I don't did know somebody after eight minutes, but did somebody I mean, die? Okay, so you get three goals and you have Seba go down for 90 seconds minimum. Mm-hmm. 
we were still saying, and I thought we were being a little bit generous to Dallas. We were saying five feels like, yeah, four or five, but yeah. like eight was just so if we, we skip six and seven. What's going on here? <laughs> and like on our first goal, we run and immediately get the ball yeah. in the net. Like we weren't, yeah. we weren't dicking around. Yeah. I don't know, man. It was, it was, it was odd. Um, we got to talk about this G play. Yeah, well, so third minute of stoppage, you get Seba playing Biru down the left. Biru overlapping Seba down the left side. Look, maybe he's getting his wind here, uh, mm-hmm. you know, now that he's been here a little while. And Biru plays a great ball, as you mentioned, ahead to Zardis. And Zardis can't quite get it off there on his first touch, but then able to slide and make another attempt at goal, it goes out for a goal kick. But I don't think he saw or felt clearly that second Dallas defender closing down from his backside who ends up getting the first touch and disrupting what probably should have been a goal. Um, but again, as the announcer says, like if you've got Jossie Zardes, like we said in the preseason after we signed Rubio, if you've got Zardes fresh to come on for 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes, a lot of teams are in a worse spot with their backup striker, I think. I, I would I would say so. I mean, like G is obviously a tenured vet. He's got 300 caps now. He's yeah. got all kinds of goals. Like he he can still provide things. Obviously, this isn't his best look right here. Um, but I just want to talk about the ball more yeah. than anything. This ball is just stunningly good. Like it comes off his foot initially, and I'm just like, damn, there's no window for him to squeeze that through there, and it just falls right into G's lap. Um, so yeah, you know, a good recovery by the defense, but. If we can get this this kind of split with these two dudes, come on, man. Uh, ninth minute of stoppage here. So we almost go 10 minutes. <laughs> Tafari gets a yellow card for taking out ring. Then the final whistle blows, and there's a little bit of a dust-up between Ibiaga and Guillermo Biru, and coaches, players come together there. And again, no love lost. Fuck Dallas. And uh, you guys are a bunch of losers. Uh, Dallas has not beat Austin in I think about two years uh, while Austin is full strength. So, uh, yep. you know, you need that yellow card to even have a chance against us in the recent past. Um, 67% possession for Austin. And that was not, a, we, we were trailing for less than three minutes. This was not a horseshoe of sadness, mm-hmm. 67%. This was their bunkering and we're doing our job, putting the pressure on them consistently throughout the full 90, uh, 13 shots to eight in favor of Austin. First game that they have outshot their opponents this year out of six tries. Uh, Four shots on target to four. One big chance for Austin, which was converted. Four corners to two in favor of Austin. And then, depending on where you look, Fatman's model, 1.11 XG for Austin, 0.65 for Dallas. Um, The league's XG model had 2.6 for Austin to 0.7 for Dallas. So I'm not sure where that disparity comes in. The 2.6 definitely feels a little bit more realistic to me um in eight of those 13 shots inside the box for austin uh any takeaways for you on those dominant fantastic glorious Mm. victorious it was a Ah. great game um (laughs) you know we had to had to change that up from the last one here um man it was the it was the best iteration we have seen of this 2024 team playing the style that they want to play and I know that the other team was beat up. They didn't give a shit about us being beat up when they've mm-hmm. beaten us in the past two years. So I'm not worried about that. You know, uh, this is exactly how the coaches wanted this game executed and how we were going to play this team. We knew how they were going to come into, into this game, particularly after you get the injury report and you did your job. And like that is absolutely fantastic. We can start a new streak. As of last night now, like we're on a winning streak. I don't know if I've ever been so happy about a one game, <laughs> one game win streak. Uh, but, you know, we just des- the fans deserve it, man. Like and if you're not happy in this situation, there's just nothing that's going to make you happy about this team. Like I, we beat yeah. our rival. We, we play fantastic. We have some great goals like this is we deserve to we can be happy. Y'all allow yourself to be happy with this because this was a great performance for the team. And we deserved it. Everyone deserved mm-hmm. it. They've been, and I mean, much more so than us, like the fans and stuff, like the dudes, the players going out there and just like having these performances, having these heartbreaks for St. Louis, tough one versus Philly. And like a thing that has been lost is that our starting schedule was brutal. 
Mm-hmm. Like we talked about it in the in the in the preseason uh, rundown of this whole thing with the schedule release, but you know this was a rough stretch of very talented teams, and now you get one of these shittier teams coming into the queue, and you can really start to build some momentum here. So I am incredibly excited. Shout out to everyone. We didn't get a chance to shout out Brad really because he wasn't being put in the just ridiculous <laughs> yeah. situations that he has been yeah. put in, but he put in another solid shift. And you saw the happiness from this man after that game. So well deserved. I'm super happy for these dudes. I hope that they enjoyed themselves and, you know, carry this over for a little bit. And then it's time to shift. We put losses in the rear view when they're done. It's time to put this re- win in the rear view mirror. And maybe after another you know, 24 hours of celebration. Yeah, I'll give it to like Monday night. Yeah, yeah. So a little more <laughs> celebration after that. But then we transition to San Jose and you can really start to build something here. So um, I love it, man. What a game couple other stats obviously last week we had the i you know i read off the list of just n- the nightmare that austin fc had been offensively through the first five matches and a lot of those figures are still if not still the bottom of the league you know very close to uh because that's not going to change in in one game out of six overall but a couple stats i did want to list off mostly from the game last night i i did want to note we are now second to last in non-penalty expected goals for teams with six or more match n- matches played, now ahead of Nashville. So suck it, Nashville. No longer last in non-penalty XG, which is a good thing to see. Um, and then a couple stats from last night's game. We had 22 shot-creating actions last night. That matched the number that we had against Philadelphia. And More good signs at home in that sense. We had four successful through balls. We came into the night with one. Whew. I mean, 52. that's 10, that's yeah, 10 yeah. on display. That and, is- and, and Alex Ring. Agreed. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 52 passes into the opponent's final third. That is 31% of our season total to date, last night included. So 31% of our passes into the opponent's final third came last night. Uh, 14 passes into the opponent's penalty area. That's 44% of our season total to date. Uh, 60 progressive passes. That's 30% of the season total to date. And we had a 75% field tilt, which is the percent of all of the passes inside an opponent's final third for both teams, 75% field tilt for Austin. The first time that they have won field tilt more than 50% in a match this season. So again, it's a one game sample size, but it was a dominant game uh, controlled all aspects of it. And again, I, the final score was not indicative of this match. It was not close. No, they literally had one chance. They capitalized on it. We were all over their ass the entire night. And, you know, like everyone's been talking about the the shit stats that we've had through these yeah. first five yeah. games here, right? But we were holding out to see what the team looked like with a full go healthy number 10. And I'm not saying that this is going to continue throughout the entire season, but it is something that you can look to and be like, okay, well, this, this looks a little different as it obviously should when your best player is fucking healthy and playing. (laughs) So um, yeah, man, just what a week for us, you know, FC two boys beat those orange bastards. Yep, We beat these boys at home. Fantastic. Yeah. GA cup going on. We'll talk last business day here in a minute, real quick couple quotes from Coach Wolf's post-game availability. He said, the ball is your friend and we punish them. We dismantle them in every sense of the game. They had very little of this game. They didn't deserve a goal and they got a goal. But what I loved was our response, our reaction from that. We created a boatload of chances. Two goals is nowhere close to enough. We had plenty on the doorstep, plenty that we didn't get on the end of. In many ways, run of play, set pieces, transition. So all in all, pretty solid. Um, and I think what I liked from this press conference outside of, he, you know, he gave some of the guys their flowers as he should. Um, but the fact that he didn't come off to me at least as like satisfied with like thinking that, Oh, we are, we're in a good spot now where we want to be. We're not. And it, it came mm-hmm. off to me like he knows that and is very much focused on, Hey, we've got another very winnable game, a game we will be favored in that we should be favored in against the quakes next weekend and so i i appreciated that it wasn't like i don't know like we've seen we've seen coach like in times like these be a little bit smug um Mm -hmm. i think i think it would be fair to say that i don't i don't think it came off that way to me last night 
Um, obviously everybody doesn't see him and his actions the same way I do, but um, I enjoyed the, the press conference. It, it, it felt very like this were this is still business time. Like we haven't done anything yet. And that's the truth. Absolutely. In the grand scheme of things, we have not done anything. We've won this one game, but you start connecting some wins here together and you find yourself creeping up. Like we're talking about it last night, happy beers, yeah. happy, yeah, happy yeah. other activities. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, and St. Louis won the whole fucking Western Conference in their first five games last yep. year. They were five After and that oh. five game stretch, five hundred team. That's it's so like it's gonna be a dogfight all the way up until this summer window. We gotta keep ourselves in place. You stay within striking distance. This is a very beatable team coming in here next week. And you know, it, it's a good thing I wasn't up there doing that post game because it would have been middle fingers everywhere. We've been popping <laughs> champagne, having a good <laughs> ass time. So yes, I agree. Uh the the job, you know the famous quote from Kobe, you know, job's not finished. Um, and we got a long ways to go. And, uh, but this is something very positive to build on. Like there was a lot of things to like last night and uh, this could have been four one so easily, yeah. like so very easily. It could, so, have been four, could have been four nil easily. Yeah. Oh, for sure. And they you don't have that I, one slip up. I like how he said that they didn't even deserve the goal because they yeah. didn't, they yeah. really did not. So, uh, just a complete domination. You love to see it. Copa de Haas, baby. We run this shit. Yep. He goes on to say, uh, Seba was awesome. Good to have him back out there. His presence, his quality, it gives confidence to the group. Diego works tirelessly. Owen was fantastic. Very ball secure. Very much involved in a lot of our attacks of the first half. He's been a part of three of our goals this season. And then he said, Danny Pereira. It was a man's performance for him. Really organized. In, in that part of the field, there is risk with what he does. He's a ball handling center mid. He's as good as they get in the league. And I agree. And let's keep him in that spot uh, until we yep. get to a team where we really need Johan's bite back there. Um, you know, I think this should be Danny's spot for the foreseeable future. At least, again, just slightly looking ahead to next Saturday, there's nothing about this San, uh, San Jose team that I know about that says Danny should be anywhere but that same spot next week. I totally agree. I think you're going to see Johan in more games on the road. And when we're trying to bunker down a little mm. bit, we're playing a team that's a little better than us. And we're kind of, you know, maybe trying to steal a point there. But, right. yeah, we don't got to get too cute with this. We don't got to advance Danny up farther than he needs to be. That is where he needs to be. He's got a thankless job. You mm. got to get the ball off your foot. You can't lose it. You can't turn it over. You got to play good defense. And he was all of that and more last night. He closed it out saying the fans were awesome. The noise in the stadium today was incredible. And when we went down a goal, they even come louder. And then we get the goal. It gets quite loud and energetic in there. And that drives our guys. That pushes our guys. Um, yeah, and I hope so. Because the fans brought it last night, man. And that was that was the first match in a while where we looked around, you know, 25 minutes in. And like, okay, yeah, this is a sellout. Yeah. Like, <laughs> there are butts in seats uh, in Q2 last night. So. Um, Anything else for you in terms of, of overall takeaways? I guess for me, it's just um, kind of what I was saying to you last night, right? We're like, I'm going to celebrate this win like I should. Rivalry game. We haven't won it for fucking ever. Um, and I think what the number was 531 days since our last comeback victory, which was first round of the playoffs against RSL in 2022. It's been a long time. So like you mentioned a minute ago, like let yourself be happy about this. No matter how you feel about the overall state of the team, mm -hmm. like, celebrate all wins and it's been so long like let yourself you know wash yourself clean in in the victory of austin fc here um and then again we get back to work because if you don't beat san jose next weekend yep then you this is an opportunity where we're about to hit another tough stretch at st louis at houston welcoming the fucking galaxy who are just a buzzsaw offensively right now yep. uh, so this san jose team that is struggling mightily you got to put them away next weekend. And so again, my focus, that will be for Wednesday's episode. Um, it's going to be a fun rest of the Sunday night here. Enjoy. I mean, I may, I may go watch this game again. E. <laughs> the double rewatch. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well said, man. I don't have anything to add. All right. Well, we can keep it moving here. Uh, and before we get into last business day, we got to check in on Whoa. the best keeper in the world. Damien Loss and Louisville City FC. Took on Birmingham Legion yesterday afternoon. 5-0 victory for Damian and Louisville. Uh, Lost three saves. So he's up to 12 saves in three games now. Louisville still undefeated. 3-0-0. They are at the top of the table. 
in USL. They have the most goals scored in the league with nine. And shocker to everybody that's not an Austin FC fan, the least goals conceded with one through their three matches. We've seen Damian Loss do something like that before. He mm-hmm. And he's just moving up the ladder, baby, and he's just going to keep on getting better. So definitely, you know, obviously we love this Louisville club now. So uh, yeah. <laughs> shout out to them for sure. Damian, keep it up, brother. Yep. Louisville City uh, next taking on Indy 11 on Saturday afternoon. So good luck to Damian and Louisville. Keep that undefeated street thing. And that will take us on the bridge to last business day E where Austin FC two took on Dinah dose on the road on Thursday evening. Um, taking a look at the lineup. We did have a couple changes, maybe a couple surprises there. Uh, one thing that I forgot about was that Sebastian Pignot was going to serve his red card suspension from Tacoma in this match. So that's why he was not in the team. He was in the stands and shout out to our boy, Logan, who was there, you know, Houston resident, Logan O'Qua out there, um, giving us the report on the ground. Pino sitting in the stands next to Ruben Bonacera. So maybe, mm. and this is just speculation on my part, maybe Bonacera just got here. Uh, maybe. Because we have not seen, uh, to mine, I haven't seen him in any sort of pictures or social media stuff. So um, I thought that was notable. As well, because that's a guy that I think you and I both expect to come in and compete for a starting spot at fullback. Absolutely. So, yeah, we'll see what comes of that. I was also confused about Pino, but that, that checks out, obviously. Yeah, yeah. So starting 11, all strip and goal. Sal and Tony back there as the center back pairing. Still Deonda on the left. Steve Louis-Jean on the right. Alonzo at the 6. Irvin Torres in front of him this game with Micah Burton at the 10. CJ on the left. Jimmy on the right. And John Santillan. At the nine, bench of Cervantes, Ariano, Wolf, Torre, Fournier, Reina, Spadafora, uh, Bobo, and Miller. So great to see Chike and Bobo in the team. Yes, absolutely. Two big pieces for us. So a couple notes here from the match. Uh, I know I think you got to tune in like end of the first half, start of the second, somewhere around there. But sixth minute, Jimmy gets some space on the right side of the box. He fires a shot at the keeper after a really nice long ball by CJ there. Uh, and some good control by Santillan to, to urge that play forward. 19th minute, Jimmy again trying to open up space down that right. Ultra aggressive. Ball gets away from him here on the end line, and he just slam, fires the ball off the boards at the end, which was, to me, it was like a little early to be that frustrated, but clearly, you know, he's he's has an aggressive mindset on offense. We, we know that about him. 26th minute, CJ. Toes the end line here, fires in a left-footed cross towards the back post where Jimmy can't quite get to it, but it was a dangerous ball nonetheless. And again, still good movement from those guys. And I think in this match overall, I thought the connectivity, the communication between CJ and Jimmy was a little bit better than we've seen over the first two outings from these guys. Um, and I think that should be expected. Uh, yeah. So like notes on Jimmy, obviously getting a little frustrated there. I didn't see that. I had some family pop in real quick, but I was able to catch the second half and, uh, he's always going to push the envelope, man. He is coming at you when he gets the ball, he's trying to score. And I really appreciate that mindset about him pairing him now with CJ on the other side, very threatening stuff. And as I get into the second half on when I'm able to watch and everything that continued on and, you know, I was very satisfied with both those guys. 28th minute here, a handball called on CJE after he makes a fantastic fucking dribble move here to get into the box. He goes in between four Houston defenders off the dribble, and it really looked like on the broadcast and on the replay, like you can go see the extended highlights online. It looks like it hit his chest, mm. and after it hits his chest, he blasts the shot off the back post and in. And of course, they call a handball, and there's no VAR. Um, but yeah, it was that was a, a tough break because I thought that was a good goal. Um, but it's tough with only one camera angle. I get it. Yeah, it's 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 not the most ideal league. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it is what it is, right? Forty uh, first minute, Usman Silla, right, who was the Mac Herman winner last year in the NCAA. That's kind of like I think the equivalent of the Heisman, right? Best player in college soccer. He starts the break for Houston. He plays in the striker, Achara, down the right. Sal in pursuit. And Marcus Allstrup with a nice kick save here. And then in the fourth minute of stoppage, Houston wins a free kick just outside of the Austin penalty area. And Allstrup, 
fantastic diving save in the top left corner of his goal to preserve the clean sheet. I thought for the two matches he was coming off of, right, where some mental mistakes, maybe not as clean with the ball as he would he would hope to be, I thought it was an awesome response in the first half and overall here uh, to preserve the clean sheet. That's great. Um, you know, like I said, I didn't get to see this first half, but I've, right. I'm really, I'm really encouraged to hear that because that was one of the main things that I was anticipating be able to watch before I had, you know, the situation with my family to come into town, everything like that. Was that was he going to be able to respond? Was he going to be able to shake off these poor performances and do his job? And it sounds like he did a really great job in the first half, and then I see him in the second half, and he's quite solid. So shout out to Marcus, man. Yeah, uh, second half here gets started, 46 minute. Jimmy putting in a cross from the right towards Santillan in front of net, and he gets a touch. It bounces down into the ground and just up over the crossbar. So his struggles with finishing continue. And on this one, man, like I think this one was like – there's been a couple times where I think John could do way better there. I would imagine he would agree with some of the the plays here early on in the season. This one I thought was more bad luck. I, f- I really felt for the guy here because I thought it was a, a gr- some great movement in the box, good cross by Jimmy, and he just couldn't quite get it in there, kind of off a deflection. But, uh, you know, still he's out there giving it his all. That's one thing I'll say about Santillan. He, he does work. Yep. yep. 51st minute here, red card for Exxon Arzu. Uh, not, pretty good name there, Exxon yes. Arzu. <laughs> um, but second yellow, just recklessly taking CJ out on a break. So obviously Austin gets a break here, up a man for the better part of 40 minutes. It was a chippy physical game. And you go back to last year with these two teams meeting up and they did not like one another and it carried over. And I was happy to see it because we did not back down from that challenge in enemy territory. 64th minute, my guy, Steven Enorgiamfi, comes on for Damn. Dynamo, too. Uh, 74th minute, Austin wins a corner on the right side. Irvin Torres finds CJ's head. CJ streaking across the face of goal, and it goes just over the crossbar and out. So I know some some frustration from CJ in this one, for sure, leading up to this point. 76th minute, we do get Bobo on making his season debut on for Santian. And then the 80th minute, it is Barahuanga who comes in to scoop up a Houston turnover, heading it down to Micah. Micah taps it onto Jimmy on the right, and Jimmy lines up what ends up being, I can only describe as a perfect ball to the back post, and CJ does a great job to come good, finish it off, 1-0 lead in the 80th minute, um, and you do get Brian Ariano on for Jimmy, who asked out, um, but that that Austin finishes it out. couple nervy moments uh, in stoppage, but... One nil victory, uh, first win of the season for FC Toe. First win of the season for the second team or the first team. Uh, and we get two of those this weekend. So again, rounding out a great weekend and uh, congrats to those boys on the three points in the rivalry match. Congrats to them for sure. We said, you know, don't care how you get it done. Just get it done. This ball from Jimmy is spectacular. Uh, there's really no other way to say it. It was spot on. CJ mm-hmm. runs through it puts this game away and uh you know i'm just happy for those dudes way to respond from a really disappointing devastating loss and uh you know that's all you can do man so shout out to those boys and we'll be rooting for you all season long we'll be with you bye week here for fc to so their next match will be against st louis city too back home at parmer field that is friday april 12th at 8 p.m Um, so maybe with the bye week, maybe we fill out our first team bench this weekend. I don't know. Just a thought coaches. Just a thought. (laughs) We'll see. Uh, we'll close it out here again. The GA cup, obviously the U 15s defending their title in this, you know, what I think is premier, the premier international tournament that takes place here in the States. Um, obviously a lot of those championship winning players have now graduated to the U 17 team. So not an easy title defense, but the U 15s on Saturday, do get a shootout victory. So similar to next pro here in the group stage of the GA, you get a point for the draw, an extra second point for the PK shootout win. So five, three PK victory over Colorado Rapids, U 15s, the U 17s go to PKs as well. They fall to LAFC's U 17s four three in pens. Then today we've got the 15s two one victory over Montreal's U15. So we like to see that they're on five points through their two matches, one more to go. And then uh, as we are recording this E, 17's taking on Nashville FC, uh, trying to get their first win in group play. Group play will wrap up tomorrow where the 15's will take on Valencia. I believe that one is streamed. Uh, I believe that is 11 a.m. Central on Apple TV. 
and then uh, River Plate taking on the 17s tomorrow afternoon. So uh, cheering for those boys. Not Certainly some, some promising results here to start. Um, and good luck the rest of the group play. Obviously, we'll be keeping up throughout knockout stage as well. Yeah, that's awesome. You get to play these international clubs too. That's so cool. So yeah. uh, great experience for these kids, man. And, um, you know, holding their own more, more, more often than not. So shout out to them. Thanks, Chad America, for the updates, brother. We appreciate yeah. them. And, um, you know, keep this thing rolling tomorrow, boys. Well, here's the Chad America updates because 15, oh. 17 at the GA Cup, 13s and 14s elsewhere in Florida at a separate tournament. They're the one hosted, I believe, by Monterey. And we talked about some of those updates that were coming in on Wednesday night. We've got some additional ones here. 13s lost to Orlando City 1 0. Uh, Orlando's only shot on goal came off of a corner, goes into the net. So tough mm. one there. 14s 2 1 victory on the last play of the game off of a corner. Uh, 13s played Sporting KC in the consolation bracket. 14s play in the semifinals of their bracket against Miami Rush again. U13s ended up finishing off on a strong note, 5 0 over Sporting KC. Uh, they go on to the final of the consolation bracket, and the U14s lost 2 1 in the semifinals to Miami Rush again, so couldn't quite get past them. Then the U13s beat Pipeline 1 0 in the silver bracket final, so you like to see that. Um, so congrats to those boys. Again, it didn't take down the entire tournament, but that is, again, that is an international tournament as well that has a lot of teams in it. And, uh, you know, getting some some big-time wins there, consolation bracket or not, you like to see it. Oh, you love to see it. And that'll do it for Episode 130 of the North End Podcast. E, anything else for you before we get out of here? Our first week after a victory in 2024. Nah, just bask basking in it right now, enjoying it very much, man. So uh we'll be ready for San Jose come Wednesday. Got some exciting stuff coming up this week for sure. Yeah. So um keep your head up for that, keep keep look out for that and everything. But um we'll get ready for San Jose and you know, hopefully we get two games in a row here. Yep. Yep. We will be talking San Jose on Wednesday's episode. Uh, of course, everything else in between. And as he alluded to, I can promise you will want to tune in to Wednesday's episode. So we will see you all then. Enjoy the beginning of your week, everybody. You know we will. And we'll see you back here on Wednesday night for another edition of the North End Podcast. Until then, easy. And I'm Zach. Vamos Austin FC, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs>